Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're hitting the space weather rundown and then seeing two key stories for the day out of the scientific journals. One on a new solar flare index data set and the other on solar cycles and political revolution. Let's get started with the last 24 hours on our star and we find there wasn't much in the way of eruptive activity or flaring, but there is potential building, especially near the center where the bright crackling is taking place. It's a brand new baby active region and we'll check her sunspot shortly, but first, solar wind here. And this weekend's event was a non-event by comparison to the previous week. Peak was in fact yesterday morning in red and purple plasma speed and geomagnetic impact. No solar storm conditions from the coronal hole stream. Coming to the neutral iron return from HMI, we see that right after the morning news yesterday, a new sunspot group was born on the Earth-facing disk. Two bits of good news. So far, it has not flared, and it's already turned past central heliographic longitudes. That's the second part. That means it's only really a flare threat for another day here, so it is a race between the rotation of the sun and the growth of that sunspot. Up first in the articles today is this new solar flare index, and it's hemispherically separated as well. But I instantly have suspicion about the data since their big claim is that the solar flaring index in the southern hemisphere was the highest on record all the way back to 1937 for the May 2024 solar superstorm. Guys, it wasn't in the top 20. This reeks of modification to make last year's solar storm seem to be of a high magnitude when that was just what the modest eruptions did to Earth's weak magnetic field. Why would they want people to not think it's Earth's weak magnetic field? But as with all solar forcing, it should also be spiking as Earth's magnetic field weakens during the ongoing magnetic pole shift, and that applies here too. Social and political revolutions, big and small, global and localized, all clustering around sunspot maximum been a turbulent several years, hasn't it? This also makes me look to the next sunspot cycle and wonder if the breaking point comes in the 2030s when the sun ramps up our planet once again. Everything lines up in society for the 2030s and then for the sun and the earth in the 2040s. Folks, we've only got a few events left in the year at Observer Ranch, mostly fun family events, but that's also when you guys get the most one-on-one -on -one time asking questions and hanging out. Tickets are about half gone for our major event next year. Roger Cunningham, the ethical skeptic, and I are going to be coming together to drill down the pole shift details over five days. It is on sale before everything else because in the next couple of months, you may find it's a little bit harder than you expected to get tickets to the ranch, and I want the OGs here to get their shot. In the next two weeks, we're going to be announcing and starting the ticket sales for August Dunning's two events at Observer Ranch next year. The textbook PDF link is below as well. Gotta love the PDF versions. And so is the link to come to one of our winter tour events. First one, just 12 days away in Omaha, Nebraska. It is the only central state's location in the group. Second one in San Diego, less than a month away. ObserverRanch.com to come see us. Links to the rest are also right down there below the video. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.